Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, the other day I had the pleasure of going on Ball Busters with Quantum Eraser and his crowd of groupies to talk about sextants. And I thought that I would get a pretty good video about that, and you saw that on Monday. But I actually got a twofer. I also got to talk about the Bob and Alice paradox that Quantum Eraser and company has been pushing so much. As I understand it, the Bob and Alice controversy, as repeated by flurfs all over the internet, involves two people. We have Bob and we have Alice. Bob and Alice are both standing on the spherical Earth. Alice looks down and sees Bob below her. Bob looks down and sees Alice to the tune of eight inches per mile squared. Now here's the paradox that the flat Earth has. They're trying to figure out how Bob could be below Alice and Alice could be below Bob. They're also trying to figure out why if Bob let a bowling ball loose, it wouldn't fall down and hit Alice. And if Alice let a bowling ball loose, it wouldn't fall down and hit Bob. Yeah, that's actually what they think. You know, just as a side note, looking at this diagram, it seems vaguely familiar to me. I seem to have seen a couple of things like that before, and I was trying to think back to what it was, and it finally occurred to me. They're representative of those there, the mammillary bodies in the brain. You can see them right there in red, right behind the brain's truck nuts. Be that as it may, let's go over to my session on Discord with Quantum Eraser and the rest of the Ball Busters. Now, as I was setting up, I made an offhanded remark about the silliness of Bob and Alice, and they took the bait. So have a quick listen. I don't follow what you're saying. It's, it's a non-argument. I mean, it's easily, it's easily disregarded within just a few minutes. It's not even set up correctly. What? The Bob and Alice argument? Yeah, it's ridiculous. Okay, explain why you say that. Well, first of all, he's got the assumption that all, all horizontals between Bob and Alice are, are parallel, and that's not the case. That's not the way it works on a sphere. I mean, it's, a, it's an indefensible assertion. The way I see it, if you have Bob on one end of a lake and you have, well, I'm going to say a frozen lake, and you have uh, the other person on the other end of the lake, if you roll a ball, they're not both rolling downhill. Nor would they be expected to. Okay. They're not rolling eight inches per mile square? No, of course they're not rolling. Right. Yes. As painfully as it seems, he actually said that. He thinks that if Bob and Alice are on opposite sides of a lake, that a bowling ball released by Bob would fall down towards Alice and vice versa. Now, of course, in order for that to work, the vector of gravity would have to be unidirectional in that direction. This has to do with two cognitive problems on the part of flat Earth. Now, when you look at the spherical Earth, gravity goes towards the center, like so. That's the way gravity works. Now, when the people in the flat Earth try and envision gravity on a spherical Earth, what they see is this. So that if you dropped a bowling ball right here, it would roll down and fall off the earth. Yes, I swear to God, that's what they think. 
Now, as I said, this is two cognitive disorders that we're dealing with here. The first is a cognitive disadvantage. By that, I mean they simply don't understand the, even the basics of our model of the spherical Earth, much less mathematics or physics or anything else related to science. They just do not have the background in order to be able to realize why that's wrong. They think that these are both valid ways of looking at gravity. The second is one of cognitive dissonance. Now, cognitive dissonance means that you are observing something that is foreign to your expectations, to your life view, to your model. And because it directly opposes your narrative and your model and your outlook on life, it causes you to be uncomfortable. It sets up a conflict within you. Now, in the flat earth, we see this frequently. When we present them with irrefutable evidence of a spherical earth, of earth rotation, of gravity, and not only can't they bring themselves to try and understand that evidence, they can't bring themselves to even look at it because it's that devastating to their narrative. But let's go ahead and continue. Okay. No, I mean, just, you know, the easiest way to do it is just try and picture it. Draw yourself, draw yourself, you know, an arch, you know, uh, an arc, a part of a sphere. Put Bob on one side and Alice on the other and draw a tangent line at their feet and see what happens. That'll explain it to you right there. Those tangent lines meet. They are not parallel to each other. And that, you know, I, I, I can't even believe the argument was put forward. How do you have a tangent on a curving surface? Easily. Really? Oh, yeah. You're saying so you, you can't can have, have a, a, you can't have a tangent a to curve. a curve? You can have a tangent to a curve, not yeah. along the curve. You have a tangent to the curve of the Earth. Yeah, not a problem at all. Yeah, but not along the curve, though. Of course it doesn't go along the curve. It's tangent to one point on the sphere. And oh, completely yeah, non-tangential to every other point. Correct. And we can call that down to the micromill, couldn't we? Yeah, absolutely, it's not tangential to any so other point on, okay. the, on the sphere. A, a tangent oh, in relation point. to a curve is useless, really. Nor is it yeah. parallel if, to if any other but that, one if we're tangent that, line on the curve. If if we're using that tangent line that we create to then draw any parallel to the surface of the curve, it's kind of irrelevant, isn't it? It, it serves no function. It's never unless, parallel to the surface of the curve. It's parallel to one. It, it's all. tangent to one point. Why do you think it's parallel well, to the curve? Said. It's not what I said. Can you said. let Adam talk, please, without interrupting him? I wanted to hear what he's saying. Go right ahead. But we can draw a tangent. A circle, can't we? Yeah, that tangent, that straight line that we're going to draw and use all our calculated methods from is useless if we're going to apply it to a curved surface which curves away from that tangent point dot micro dot. That Why would you say it's useless? Unless, well, I was about to, this is the second time of me saying this, so hopefully the full bit you'll be able to comprehend unless you already know the relationship of r and you're able to back calculate it from that from the measurement you've taken based upon a tangent yeah a tangent no. straight line so in reality you take that tangent straight line measurement and all your calculations are based on that aren't they yeah no, I disagree with you. Just delaying. I don't blame you. Take a big breath. Well, let's this go see what we have here. Days, hey, this is going to be a cracker. Have you got a screen to present, or are we just... Well, I've got a camera and a whiteboard, and I can demonstrate the section look... with that. Uh, there we go. Can you guys see me? Just. Great. I've just got to figure out how to make the screen. Ah, oh, it's yeah. come up as a stream now. I can get it. All right. Well, first thing, let's go ahead and get rid of Bob and Alice. How's that sound? Here's Bob. <laughs> Bob and I, I, this will be fun. Let me know when you're going to do the sextant so uh, I can start screen recording then. 
I don't wait, need look, this. Go and screen record it right now. Look, Bob, I'll give you if you've passed okay. if you think you've passed the Bob, Bob, if you think you've passed the intelligence test of Bob and Alice, I'll give you that, right? It's cool. Yeah, it's right there. Don't, that's don't what waste. see that's down no, no, for Bob. No need, no, no need to waste anybody. And that's time. down for Alice. It, it's, no issues it's, at all. So that that gets rid of Bob and Alice. Not, all right. Not really. So. Not, not, not really. <laughs> all right. And there you have it, folks. Now, you see the techniques that they're using already. First, he's just constantly going on and going on and going on. And when I try to get a word in edgewise, QE jumps in to protect him and say, hey, I want to hear what he's saying. Don't interrupt him. Okay, well, fine. Second of all, you see how he's trying to set the tangent to the surface of the earth up so that he can try and argue against it later when we talk about sextants? This is kind of a classic flat earth debate technique. You try and just drone on, and then you try and throw a little tidbit in there once in a while. You see how he's trying to talk about R, and he's trying to talk about calculated values, and so on and so forth. He's trying to basically poison the well against any of that later on in the discussion about celestial navigation. But I didn't let him get on with it. But you see, that's the technique that you have to use to deal with these people. You just don't let them get away with it. You just keep them focused and stick to your guns. Now, remember when I was talking about this originally and they were trying to say, well, balls rolling across lakes and all that nonsense and how they couldn't see how any of this would work? He's smart enough to know that as soon as I put this diagram up, I had him. I mean, I totally blew out his Bob and Alice paradigm. And you see how quickly he changed his tune and tried to minimize it? Oh, no, no, I'll just give that to you. So he's already conceded the Bob and Alice argument. And all I had to do was draw it up on the board once. But then he tried to get me to stop talking about which way is down for Bob and for Alice. He didn't want me to put those little arrows in there pointing down below their line of sight because he knew that that was just the frosting on the cake that ripped it apart. But I didn't let him get away with that. I went ahead and continued to push it so that I had it out. Now, if they continue to push the Bob and Alice fallacy, now you know that they know better. They knew better to begin with. They were pushing this crap on their little posse to try and make themselves look important. It didn't work. People like me don't respond to crap like that. And something else that I don't respond to, have a listen to QE here. So that, that gets rid of Bob and Alice. Not, All right. Not really. So. Not, not, not really. That was a <laughs> no, really it sad an imbecile. of it. Hold All on, right. hold on. I just got back. Wait, oh, oh on, man. On, I'm trying to record. Damn it. Oh, hold on, Adam. I just got back. What the f Are you retarded? Bob. Yeah. Are, yeah. You, re are you retarded? Why would you ask that? Well, you just drew diagram on the board and said well that's all for bob and alice let me ask it you is all for bob and alice yeah let me ask There's no you more a question, to it cram muncher. cram muncher let me ask all you a question first, all right now kiwi no, eight inches per mile square. i'm more than happy i'm more than happy to talk to you guys but i'm not going to be called names you're right. out of here no 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 Come i'm on. trying to get this you're screen grab man you don't know, oh. retard bob Come on. you're little bob and alice you're a all Idiot. right, we already know that, but we're trying to get the, the retarded uh, <laughs> argument for his sexton thing right, he's about right, to do right, on the border. All right, all right, I'll let it go. I got you, Elijah. Go ahead. <laughs> Thanks, QE. Have a good evening. Oh, you never cease to amaze, QE. Yeah, you never cease to amaze me. I'll shove my... Now, what's really epic here is that Quantum Eraser is having a profanity-laced temper tantrum, a.k.a. a two-year-old. And even his own people are saying, Quantum, slow down. I'm trying to get this recorded. You know, the key to it is you now have Bob the Science Guy on Ballbusters. This is your chance to try and make Bob look dumb. Screaming profanities at Bob the Science Guy because he destroyed your pet paradox with just a simple diagram on a whiteboard doesn't make you look like you have the upper hand here. It looks like you just got humiliated in front of your own little posse and had to try and figure out some way to try and get the upper hand again. Well, screaming profanities at a reasonable adult doesn't do that.
Well, so much for Bob and Alice, and thank you, Questionable Education, for demonstrating your immaturity in front of everybody. You know, that really was epic. I, I couldn't help but laugh at you. Now, maybe that's one thing that we should really start doing, is when they start carrying on like that, just go ahead and laugh at them. It drives them insane. You saw me do that in the discussion on the sextant. I'm still in his head over that. So, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for stopping by. Remember, hit that like and subscribe for the channel. We'd love to have you follow us, and I'll see you again soon. Take care.